Hi, this is Trisha Conover with Wine Wanderings, and today Philip Anderson is joining me from Twisted Cedar Winery. Hi, Philip. Thanks for Thank joining. You, Thanks for having me. Tell me, uh, let's tell the audience what you do and uh, for Twisted Cedar and a little bit about the winery. I'm vice president of sales, so I go around and try to sell the wine. And um, what's cool about the, the, the wine is that it is owned by the Cedar Band of Paiute uh, Indians. So it's 100% native owned and 100% of the profits go back to the band and they're used for uh, various social programs, you know, after school programs for kids and uh, family counseling and that kind of thing. Well, I was wondering how it benefited uh, the tribes and are some of them employed then in the winery as well? No, we really don't have anybody employed in the winery. The, um, the winery is actually in a campo near Lodi and the uh, reservation is in Utah. Um, so, but we do, have, we do have a lot of people who are involved with it, um, who work with us on different projects. And uh, I know when we were putting together the back label, um, I don't know that all 257 tribal members gave me their thoughts on it, but a lot of them did. A lot of them did. Well, that's fun that they got involved. I'm drinking um, the, the Twisted Cedar Cabernet Sauvignon as we're sitting here. Tell me about some of the wines you make and some of the press you've gotten from them. So we make seven different wines these days. Um, and there's four, four reds, three whites. We do the Cabernet, which uh, won the gold medal in the uh, Sunset Magazine International Wine Competition. And uh, has, has done, done well for us. Um, we also have a Malbec, which is kind of unusual uh, for California. We have a blend of Petit Verdot and Petit Syrah that's one of my, one of my favorites. Um, and we have a Zinfandel because, uh, you know, if you're going to have Lodi wine, you kind of have to have Zinfandel. I think it's the law. Uh, for white wines, we do Chardonnay and Pinot Grigio. And we also make a Moscato, but we source the grapes from that from Parksburg because it's a, just a little cooler there due to the, um, uh, the breeze coming off the canals. Cool. I, I actually tried your uh, Petit Verdot, um, Petit Syrah blend, and it was, it was wonderful. Really smooth tannins, very uh, spicy, uh, was a lovely wine. So you, you source your grapes from Lodi. What's your target market and how do people find out about you? We, um, uh, you know, we want everyone to drink it. I won't say that there's a, a specific target market, but we do, we're, we're pricing the wines at, at $15 or less in most places. And so, you know, we're, we're trying to be something that's, um, you know, more of an everyday, everyday wine and not just a special occasion wine. Um, before COVID, we were probably a little bit more available in restaurants because we're kind of priced at a good price for buy the glass wine. And we always make sure we have enough acid to them to pair with things. And uh, we want it to be, you know, accessible. But of course, um, now we're selling a lot more in, um, in retail stores and that sort of thing. So I understand, Philip, that your wines are sustainable. What does that mean for a customer? Well, so... I've noticed there's a lot more out there where people say, oh, this is sustainable these days. But it, it, what's important is how that's certified and how that's determined. So ours are certified through Lodi rules, which means that there's 120 different specific things you have to, to do to qualify. And it, it, what's cool about it is it ranges from everything from, you know, not using a lot of pesticides uh, to uh, making sure that the people who pick the grapes get paid a living wage to uh, using renewable energy uh, in the in the field and in the facility. So it, it's kind of across the board. And, and it just to me, it's a the Lodi Rules program is, is the uh, gold standard of, of sustainability. And I think it's it's something that every winery should want to do because, um, you know, the goal, the goal is to be able to keep the vines healthy for longer. It's to keep the land healthy for longer. And, you know, for, for some agriculture, the idea is to, you know, grow as many carrots as you can on the smallest amount of land. But you and I both know that growing the most grapes you can grow on per acre doesn't equal good wine. So, you know, I think it makes sense to, to move towards sustainability. 
Well, that's certainly true. Um, I'm I'm enjoying your cab. I could I could see drinking this with with steaks and hamburgers, and it seems very approachable for food. So, um, my last question for you: Some of our readers are not in California. Where can they buy it online uh, directly? Tell yeah, me how else. It. You can buy it directly from us from uh, twistedcedarwines.com. Um, so that's that's easy enough. But uh, we're in uh, we're available in some stores in in Texas, Oregon, uh, about to be Montana, New York just started um, last month. Uh, so you know we're we're slowly slowly getting it out there. Um, it, it's um, in in the United States, you know. It's not one market; it's fifty plus different markets. So it, it can be a long haul. But uh, never underestimate the ability of somebody to go into their local store and say, "I want this wine." You know. Yes, we need to do that here in Texas. Well, Philip, thank you for joining me on Wine Wanderings today. Thanks for having me, and uh, I appreciate it.